Hello and welcome to the new episode of the tutorials for the multiplayer inventory system. Today we will build the drag and drop function so that we can move the items in our inventory from one slot to another. This will also work when we later add the hotbar or storage chests. Let's get started. We start in our WB underscore item slot. To activate the drag and drop for the item slots, we have to overwrite some functions. First of all, we go to overwrite here in functions and look for the function on preview mouse button down. Select this and the function is automatically created. First we make a little more space and create a branch. We grab the pin mouse event again and search for the note is mouse button down. Select this, click on the small keyboard symbol so that the editor waits for input so that we can determine which mouse event we want to catch. In our case, we are using the left mouse button. We connect the note to our branch. Now we check. If the click is not the left mouse button, we provide the return and node with the node unhandled. If it is the left mouse button, we then grab the mouse event pin again and search for the detect drag if pressed function. Here we also select the left mouse button and connect the pins. That's it for the on preview mouse button down function. Next, we search for the on drag detected function under overwrite. This function determines what happens when we grab the slot and start dragging. First, we search for the variable from our slot widget, slot has item. We declared this variable previously in wb underscore item slot master. Our item slot widget has this class as a parent. We can access all these variables from here. If you click on the checkbox here, you can then select show inherited variables. Then we see all the inherited variables from the WB underscore item slot master widget that we can access. We make a branch on slot has item variable. If the slot does not contain an item, then we ran a return node with an empty asset. But if the slot contains an item, then we create a widget. and search for WB underscore item slot master. This is our widget that is to be used visually to display an item slot. After we have created the widget, we call the function update slot data so that the widget can be created with the information from the slot. We take the variable slot data and connect it to the slot pin. If we double click on update slot data, we see that the function is located in WB underscore item slot master and is executed here. We create a comment for the entire function and rename the comment to update slot data. Now we create a new invent and rename it set box slot size. We go to the designer, select the size box and rename it to widget size. We mark it as a variable so that we can access it in the graph. We now take the widget size and drag it into the graph. We search for set width overwrite. This is located under variables child layout. Then we search again for set height overwrite. We connect the execution pins and grab the pin from width overwrite and drag it to the event so that we can automatically create an input value for it. We select the event and rename the input value to size box. This will determine the size of our slot widget. Since our slots are rectangular, we can only use one input value for the size and set it consistently for both the width and height overwrite variables. We comment on the whole thing as set widget size. Go back to WB item slot data widget. Grab the return value pin from our created widget slot and now look for the function set slot box size. We hook it up with a few reroute notes and set the size box value to 60. This has the effect that when we start dragging a slot, it is attached to the mouse and displayed in a smaller version. Next, we need to create a drag and drop operation. We'll do this via the content drawer. Right click in our widget folder and select blueprint class. At the bottom of all classes, search for drag and drop operation and select it. We name the file BP underscore inventory drag and drop. Open it. Since I want to avoid casting objects in my tutorial, we will now create an interface for our drag and drop operation 
Under the folder, Inventory System, Interfaces. We call the interface BPI underscore Inventory Drag Item. Open it and create a function called Get Dragged Slot Data. This has two output values. We call the first input from Inventory Ref. This is of type BPC underscore Inventory Object Reference. The second output value is called slot data from type s underscore inventory slot. We can now close the interface and go back to our bp underscore inventory drag and drop. Here we go to class settings and add the interface we just created, bpi underscore inventory drag item. We open the interface function and first we create two new variables for the drag and drop operation. The first variable is called from inventory ref, which is of the BPC underscore inventory as object reference data type. The second variable is called slot data and is of the S inventory slot structure type. Don't forget to set the instance editable and export on spawn checkboxes for both variables. Now we connect the two variables with our return node of our interface, get dragged slot data. Save the whole thing and go back to wb underscore item slot widget. Here we now search for create drag and drop operation. Connect this with our return node. Next, under class dropdown, Select the BP underscore inventory drag and drop class that we just created. If you have activated the setting for displaying the inherited variable in the cogwheel, you will also see the variable inventory ref here on the left under the category components. We grab the variable and connect it to the from inventory ref pin from the drag and drop node. Then we get the variable slot data and connect it to the pin slot data from our drag and drop operation. And don't forget to connect the created widget return value with default drag visual. Otherwise, you won't see what happens when you drag a slot. If you right click on the create drag and drop node and select refresh nodes, the pins will be resorted and the variables we created will be displayed below. This allows us to visually organize the whole thing a little better. We need to define what happens when we drop the slot. To do this, we go back to AuraWrite and search for the function onDrop. We disconnect the executions, make some space again, grab the pin operation pin from the onDrop function, and now we can search for our interface get dragged slot data message. This now gives us the information about which slot and which inventory this slot belongs to. This will now give us the information about the inventory and the slot on which we dropped our slot. Now we search for the node get player pawn and check with the node to avoid errors. If the player pawn is valid, then we call our interface get character ref. We save it and now go to our BPC underscore inventory component. Here we now create a new custom event and name it transfer item server. We set it to replicated, run, and server. Don't forget to mark the whole thing as a reliable because otherwise the traffic requests sometimes get lost. Next, we create a new function called transfer item. Here we have three input values. First input is to inventory component of type BPC underscore inventory as object reference. The second input value is from index of type integer. The third value is to index of type integer. Finally, an output named successfully of type boolean. We now go back to the event graph, grab the created function transfer item and drag it onto the execution node from transfer item server. Now we can simply grab the three individual pins and drag them onto the event function and the inputs are automatically created there. We move the transfer item function into the transfer category and set it to private. Because if we want to add items to the inventory, we can only do that via the server and you can't call the function directly. Compile and save the whole thing and now we go to our character class BP underscore third person character. 
we highlight the node to give us items and move it away to the left because we don't need it for now. Here we now create a new custom event and call it on inventory slot drop server. We drag the BPC underscore inventory component into our graph and search for transfer item server. We connect the pins and here you can also link in again. Simply grab the individual pins from transfer item server and drag them onto the event and the inputs will be created automatically. Attention, here we have a small peculiarity. We select the event on inventory slot drop server. Here we rename the target input to from container. Now we can simply delete the BPC inventory variable. The whole thing has now the background. If we grab, for example, a slot from our hotbar and drag it to our inventory, then we know here from container pin is our hotbar. The to inventory component pin is our inventory and accordingly the item is then transferred. We comment on the whole thing with the comment transfer items between inventory components. Select the whole thing, click rest and select collapse notes. Rename it to inventory manager. Open it, move everything around and presto, we have organized it a bit better and our character blueprint remains clear. We go back to our WB item slot widget and here we can now call our just created function on inventory slot drop server from our character blueprint. Now we just have to pass the corresponding variables. From the interface get dragged slot data, we take the pin from inventory ref and connect it to the from container pin. This tells us which inventory the slot comes from. Next, we make a break off slot data pin and only display the slot index pin. Connect the slot index with the from index pin. After that, we get the variable slot data variable from current slot. Make a break off and here we also only display the slot index pin. We connect this to to index pin. Finally, we grab inventory ref and connect it to to inventory component pin. We hide the inherited variables. Save the whole thing and now we can try it out. We press play. Here we can now see our items. We can grab the individual slots to drag them around. When we grab a slot, a bit of it is displayed smaller to visually improve the whole thing a bit. And that's it for this episode of Drag and Drop. In the next episode, we will build the function that allows the slots to be moved and stacked on top of each other. If you liked it, give me a like there. If you don't want to miss any more episodes, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.